of A Course in Miracles live. Yeah, what a journey this is, going deeper and deeper inside. And, and this morning when I woke up, I, I was just in the stillness and I started to get, uh, I guess it's acronyms. Uh, and the, uh, the, the statement that I was seeing in my mind's eye was put God first and and the put the acronym put was an acronym for precious universal truth <laughs> God uh, give only divinity and first forgive insane relative space time <laughs> You know, because when you go deep, deep, deep into the mind and you really tune into what Jesus has to say, you know, he, he's been saying and saying and saying, you know, it's a perceptual problem. It's like if you went to a 12-step group or uh, an Alcoholics Anonymous group or something of the sort, you know, you have to first come to admit the problem uh, as it is, and Jesus says, you know, it's very important to to recognize the problem exactly as it is, so that it it can be solved, so that you can accept the correction. And uh, pretty famously in Workbook Lesson seventy nine, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. In Lesson seventy nine, and then Lesson eighty in the workbook is let me recognize my problems have been solved. And in those two lessons, he's basically telling us that until you can correctly define the problem, you won't be able to accept the correction or the solution, even if it's already there. And uh, in night, lesson 80, he's telling us the, the problem has been solved. The correction is there. <laughs> Salvation is among your thoughts. Find it. But he's also telling us in 79 that as long as you define it, in terms of the world, in terms of the projection, people, places, things, uh, if you keep to trying to define it in terms of subjects and objects and, and who did what to who and who was a victim of who and who was abused by who, and if you keep looking to the projected world, which is the smoke screen that the ego projected out in the Big Bang to uh, cover itself, to keep itself from being uh, uncovered and discovered and exposed and seen as the nothingness that it is, until you really accept that it's a perceptual problem, that it's a fragmented filter, the ego is, is basically a fragmented filter. And then when you're looking through it, it's like in Corinthians in the Bible, when you're looking through a darkened glass, you don't see clearly. Uh, you're in the fog. You're, you're in the darkness. And then when you open up your heart to the eternal love of God and begin to realize the eternal nature of God and the eternal nature of Christ, then, then the temporary uh, fragmented perceptual world of time and space, which is quite relative, uh, it needs to be released. Even the great quantum physicist of our previous century here, Albert Einstein, you know, he said, you can see everything as if it's a miracle or everything as if it's not a miracle. And uh, Jesus is encouraging us to, to see miracles every day. The miracles are natural. When they do not occur, something has gone wrong. Miracles are, be, are to become habits, the habitual way of, of thinking, a habitual way of experiencing the world is a world of miracles that is inspired by Jesus and the Holy Spirit in our mind. And Jesus is really directing us to extend the miracles where he tells us they can be given. So that acronym, mm, it's a sweet spot for me today as I wake up this morning, uh, put God first. And the quantum physicists have told us that uh, time and space are relative. That's what Einstein taught us with his theory of relativity that uh, that time and space are relative and proportionate to one another and uh, and that basically the world of perception, the world of the cosmos 
the world of space-time is, is a relative world and it is not absolute. And uh, as we go deeper in, in quantum terms to the quantum field or in, in terms that Jesus uses in A Course in Miracles, uh, the happy dream and the forgiven world, we start to see the connectedness of everything. Everything is completely connected because everything is mind and there is nothing outside mind. Uh, in fact, uh, Christ is an idea in the mind of God, a perfect idea that I am presence before Abraham was I am is, is a perfect idea in the mind of God and remains one with God. So uh, we're following the, the Christian symbols of the Holy Trinity. The Holy Spirit is our bridge back, our reminder of our eternal nature as the Christ and Therefore, the Holy Spirit is our comforter and our instructor. And he gives us beautiful uh, daily reminders and instructions as we uh, practice the rules for decision in the back of the text of A Course in Miracles. And we go through these beautiful workbook lessons. So in particular, uh, the last part of Put God First, the, the first, forgive insane relative space time it's it's a perceptual problem because when the ego made up linear time this past present future construct that uh, is a self-concept it's a it's a it's an identity that was made to take the place of uh, the eternal christ identity the i am presence then this construct is basically the projection of, of guilt and the projection of fear. And Jesus is telling us over and over, don't try to find love in a loveless place. You know, in a, a time space, Big Bang, uh, we'll say of, uh, of what seems to be time and space and physicality, uh, what, what it has been called, it's an illusion, it's a trick of the mind that the ego has uh, perpetuated and basically when we forgive we're not really forgiving people and places and events we have to go back 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 to the big bang and prior to the big bang to the uh, seeming explosion of gases that seems to be talked about in uh, scientific history but basically we have to go back to the belief in separation, to the, to the tiny mad idea, the incredible belief that, that, uh, that anything could exist outside of the mind of God. And what we've been told by the Beatles, love is all you need, love is all there is actually, God is and Christ is and spirit and the kingdom of heaven is the fact and then the projected world of time and space is the big distraction from uh, accepting the correction, the atonement, and, and uh, remembering God. So this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, set of, of acronyms. Put God first. Precious universal truth. Put God, give only divinity. And first, forgive insane relative space and time. It puts everything in a much broader context that uh, when you're trying to forgive on the timeline, then it's, a, it's an impossible situation because uh, the timeline was, was generated by the ego to, to cover over the, the forgiven world or the happy dream. And so it all comes down to uh, time and space, time and space being simultaneous and not uh, a linear construct. And yet all the stories of the world have, uh, have the su subjects and the objects in them. Uh, that's what makes a story. <laughs> if, when you look at, at what literature has given us and uh, if you go all the way back to Shakespeare, he was pointing us towards eternity. Uh, he was saying things like to be or not to be, that is the question. And basically that is the final distinction, you know, to be as God created me or not to be as God created me, to be a spirit, 
uh, a perfect creation of a perfect loving God or to be a time-space creature uh, called a body, a person, a personality, you know, that's the, the, the distinction to be or not to, to be. And so we really, really enjoy the depth of the teachings because that the swear our joy comes in consistent joy consistent glee and happiness come from remembering our true self if you want to call it self-realization that's an eastern term from uh, a, a very long historic uh, tradition of uh, advaita vedanta and and spiritual awakening that comes it's more associated with the East. Uh, we have Abraham Maslow, who has talked about the top of his pyramid as self-actualization. The ancient Greeks, uh, way, way back in the early centuries be before Jesus, talked about know thyself and the Delphic Oracle and all kinds of wonderful uh, deep teachings from, uh, from Socrates and Plato and the Greek philosophers. But all roads point back to remembering the self, remembering the true identity, remembering this, the spirit, and letting go of all projections. Basically, projections are, are judgments. Projections are an attempt, Jesus tells us in his course, the attempt to get rid of something that you don't want. But he says by projecting you actually keep it in awareness. So if you have an attack thought, which the ego is the attack thought <laughs> that, that sponsors all attack thoughts, but when you have an attack thought and you try to get rid of it by seeing it as if it's somewhere else, that's the projection, putting it onto a world and, and trying to give existence to something that doesn't have existence, that, that wasn't created by God. We're familiar from the Bible, the Old Testament, about the, the begats, the procreation, uh, Adam and Eve, and so on and so forth. And, and we go through the begat, begat. But what Jesus is teaching us is that spirit creates in spirit, creates in spirit. That, that spiritual creation is, is a continuous line of spirit creating spirit in eternity. It has nothing to do with time and space. So the second part of put God first, the G-O-D, give only divinity, is what Jesus means when he says, teach only love, for that is what you are. Give love, extend love, be the love, uh, shine the love, shine the light, <laughs> be the light of the world. You know, the, the Beatitudes are all about being. And the top of Abraham Maslow's pyramid was all about being. And uh, any system that comes back to the creator or the source or the ultimate cause, or we could even call it the absolute, uh, that God is, heaven is, spirit is, is an absolute. And the relative world of, of time and space is... Uh, or just the effects of an unreal cause. The ego is an unreal cause, not coming from God, and therefore the projection of the ego is a, a, an unreal world of effects that, that simply seem to be bodies and behaviors and uh, all kinds of things, <laughs> a universe of things that seem to exist in, in and of themselves, but really don't. And uh, we learn that in, in workbook lessons 183 and 184, that basically the, this is the process of, uh, of delusion. This is the process of uh, psychosis, of believing you've had a break from reality, a, a break from eternal life, and, and now are dealing with it in time and space. So it's really beautiful because it, it gets down to the core teachings of of forgiveness. You forgive your brother what he did for what he did not do, meaning you pluck the offense from your mind, as Jesus taught us 2,000 years ago, before you get the speck out of your brother's eyes, get the beam or the log out of your own. You pluck the offense 
out of your mind where you allow the offense to be released through the Holy Spirit's uh, loving guidance. And uh, we have heard the word sin, but we are told that sin is an error and that error has been corrected by the Holy Spirit. So that's where the innocence, the divine innocence of Christ comes in. Uh, the lion and the lamb shall lie down side by side is uh, the lion representing strength and the lamb representing innocence. And that's what meekness is. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. That's, that's the meekness of spirit. That's the, the, the gentleness of spirit gently overlooking error and looking to the light of truth that is on the altar. The Holy Spirit always looks to the light of truth and never categorizes errors. The Holy Spirit overlooks the error and remembers the innocence. And that's the divinity. That's the divinity. Give only divinity. So as we go forth, and another sparkling new day is an opportunity to give as God gives. God doesn't know what reciprocity means. God only gives. Christ is an eternal creation in which everything that is God was given to Christ. And uh, that's what spirit is. Spirit only gives. And the rest is is just to be released from the mind. All attempts at reciprocal relationships, doing something to get something in return is to be, that's just to be forgiven because the ego is basically the getting mechanism of the mind and it's always trying to get something for its own. And you can see that motive uh, played out in all the world, trying to get ahead, trying to get more, trying to get something. Uh, it's a focus on outcomes in the world, trying to get outcomes as if some outcomes in the world uh, in terms of form are more desirable than others. But spirit is showing us that all of the outcomes of this projected world are equally unreal. That there's no hierarchy among these seeming images and outcomes and and there's no order of difficulty in miracles in forgiving them if you can forgive one thing you can forgive all things uh, because of the power of god because of the holy spirit in our mind so it's a glorious glorious waking life of remembrance and uh, remembering every moment of every day Put God first, put God first. This is, this is the prayer of the mystics and saints, put God first. This is the, the prayer of our hearts for connection. Our connection comes through our creator, through God, and therefore it, it radiates to everything and everyone through the altar in our mind, through uh, putting God first on the altar and having no other idol images before the Lord thy God. It comes from releasing all desires for something to be different than it is in form, to let all things be exactly as they are. It comes from trying just to accept what is real and true and seeking not to change the world, seeking rather to change the mind about the world and, and realize that all things work together for good, for those who love the Lord, truly all things work together and there are no exceptions except in the ego's judgment, which is not real. So you can see where this is a pathway that takes you to the reality of love, the reality of, of giving love every moment, going into the moment, the holy instant, to remember that, that the greatest gift you can offer is the gift of, of who you are, the gift of being the light of the world and, and letting that light shine and share and extend. Uh, just as in heaven, love extends love, light extends light, joy extends joy. Uh, you could say that is the, the practice. 
learning to give as God gives, learning to give without conditions, without uh, expectations. And it's interesting to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit because the symbols that are given are just stepping stone symbols. Uh, when you receive guidance in terms of thoughts and feelings and words, it's just an opportunity to, to practice the pray, listen, and follow, you know, to be in the, the flow of the Spirit. Every day should be devoted to miracles, and prayer is the medium of miracles. So when we pray and listen and follow, we glide along in the love of God. We go with that smooth glide. We go with the flow, as they, they say. We go with the, the joy. We go with the happiness. We go with God's will, which is for perfect happiness for everything and everyone, because all is created by God in the kingdom of heaven, and all is love, and all is one in the kingdom of heaven. So our remembrance of heaven is, is important. You might say that's uh, the only important thing, remembering God throughout the seeming day, moment, 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 remembering, remembering, remembering God. So what a journey, what a, a journey without distance. We're just floating in this love and light and, and uh, yeah, I just thought, to come on and just share some joy from the uh, the acronym uh, that I experienced when I uh, was awakened this morning. Precious, precious universal truth put. God, give only divinity first. Forgive insane relative space time. <laughs> it's it's. It's kind of got a bit of a rhyme to it <laughs> there at the end. <laughs> so I love you. Thank you for being on this journey. Thank you for your uh, messages of love. I, I receive a lot of beautiful reminders. Sometimes they're little uh, emails, they're little messages, uh, they're little voicemails, little reminders precious little sparkly reminders throughout the day of, of what is real, what is true, what is valuable, what is everlasting, what is eternal. Yeah. Thank you, God, for giving love unconditionally and, uh, and shining your light unconditionally forever and ever and ever. Have a glorious day. Love you.